requirement for godly influence. Requirement for godly influence. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word today. Thank you that you are a great God. Thank you that you are a great I am. We give you praise. Receive your glory. We honor you. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited for today? I'm excited too. Glory be to God. We just read the book of Daniel chapter 1 and um, we are looking at uh, Daniel and his friends. They were exiled from Judea when uh, King Nebuchadnezzar besieged them um, and they were taken into exile. So there, um, the king wanted to assimilate some brilliant, beautiful, understanding people. People, he said, that they're going to be serving in the, in the king's palace after they finish their three-year training. So they selected Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to, to be serving, to go through that course of training and they were selected. But one thing is, you know, that they have to, um, they were given king's portion. Kings order the portion they have to be eating so that they can be looking like them, behaving like them. So that means they have to forfeit the culture that they have. But remember, they were children of Israel. They know God. They serve a living God. So look at verse 8. I will read that for you. He said, but Daniel reserved not to defy himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defy himself in that way. Now, you remember the children of Israel have a covenant. They have a covenant living God. And they were given laws. They were asked not to eat the food that was sacrificed to the idol. Let's look at um, Exodus 34, verse 14 and 15. So he was saying that they were not supposed to eat, for you shall not worship no other God, for the land whose name, yeah, God is jealous, and his name is jealous. Next verse. Least thou shalt make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they shall go on warring after the gods and do sacrifice unto their God. And one shall call thee and they shall eat of the sacrifice. You see, God forbid them not to eat food sacrifice to the idol. So now, if Daniel and his friends agree to eat that portion of food, they have contracted, they have compromised to the law of God. So they have it in their mind. He said, let that mind be in you, the mind of Christ, that that mind shall be in you so that you shall be able to do the work of the kingdom. You shall be able to do, have an, a godly influence to, to do the work of the kingdom. So in a nutshell, influence, you can, you can have an impact. Your influence can have an impact in somebody else's life. Your influence you are very influenced, can cause somebody else to change his way of life. Your, your influence can impact an unbeliever to begin to walk in the, in the walk of the kingdom. So Daniel, you can see in his life that he walked in the kingdom. So one of the first points I want to make here is that Daniel have a strong conviction about God's word. Daniel first encounter with the pagan culture is when he arrived. So the king ordered their food and the youths, um, they wanted to, to eat their food so that they can become like them. But he took permission. He asked for permission not to eat that food. Then the, the chief eunuch wanted to say, do you, do you want them, the king to kill, to take my head for you if you are not looking like other people? So Daniel requested to do what? To do a 10 days fasting. He wanted to eat only vegetables and water instead. And after the 10 days, then he's going to evaluate them and see how they look like. So 
after the 10 days passed, they were still looking better than the people that were eating the king's food. So what happened? God gave them favor. God gives favor to his children. He gives them favor to be able to, to go and do the work of the kingdom that they're committed to do. So what is this conviction? A conviction is something we believe because we are convinced and persuaded that uh, it is true. And that's how we should feel and about God's word. That's how we should be feeling about the word of God. So the second thing I want you to see here is that Daniel and his friends were committed to the conviction they know about God. They were ready to go above and beyond. They don't want to compromise. So Daniel made up his mind. You have to make up your mind to serve God. You don't just decide every morning, you know, you can't even get up to pray, to join us in our morning devotions. But at the same time, you have to make up your mind to serve God. God is not a man that he should lie, but a man that and what he says he does. So our first thing we must do is to commit to doing God's word, to commit ourselves to doing God's word. Commitment begins in your mind. Let us have that mind, that mind of Christ. So commitment begins to do, you know, Jesus said, let your light shine before men. Can you look up there, uh, Matthew 5, 16? Let your mind, let, let your light shine before men that people would see the good word and you should believe in one thing, you see. When we say one thing and do another thing, we are not doing the work of God. And that light does not shine. You see, God is light and there is no darkness in him. If you say that you are a child of God, you should be walking in the light. Lord has put his spirit upon you. God has given you the spirit, his spirit upon you. You see, God is light. And in him there is no darkness. First John 1 5. So we are going to see that um, something happened after they, they refused to eat the food. God gave them favor, they look healthier. And verse 17 said. To the four Hebrew boys, God gave knowledge and understanding and of all kinds of literature and learning. Daniel could, um, could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Verse 18 said, and at the end of the time said by the king to bring them to the ser into the service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none of equal to Daniel and Hanai and Michelle and Azra. So they entered into the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about the king questioned them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Amen. So God made them to be 10 times smarter, 10 times better than all other people. Our God himself is trustworthy. You can trust the God that we serve. Amen. Another thing I want you to see is courage. So when they started into the service, you can see that they develop knowledge, they have an understanding. Now they are into the king's service. So courage, in a way, is to stand for our own convictions. What, what you believe in, that what God can do. You see, when you are a servant of God, God uses your influence to impact other people's lives. God influence if you can have in your community helps people to understand the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ, to, to grow in the knowledge and understanding of the scripture and walk in righteousness, serve and follow Christ. So you see that there's a lot of things we can get from 
getting the influence if you have that, if you decide to walk with God. Amen? So let's see Daniel in, in the chapter 6. Now kings, um, kings now wanted to, um, once they get in, into the service, he met um, Daniel, one of his um, administrators. But the people were jealous of him. Why are they jealous of him? Because Daniel is an exemplary. He's, he's, he's not corrupt like them. He's, he, he prays three times a day to his God. And, and they, they couldn't find anything to blame him. So the king, um, despite all this, um, Daniel and his friends uh, were facing a lot of danger in their kingdom. They, they faced a powerful king that could easily take their life. Um, so in verse 2, in chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 14, can you get that? Daniel chapter 2, verse 14. So Daniel had, uh, the kingdom of had a dream. And he wants these enchanters and everybody to tell him the dream and give him interpretation. Nobody could be able to do it. The enchanters could not interpret the dream. And he ordered to, be, to kill and annihilate all his wise men in the kingdom. So now it is a threat. They, they, the chief um, wanted to go and get Daniel and all the people that were serving the kingdom to kill them. So now this has, has passed a degree to kill all the wise men in the Babylon. See what happened here. Uh, verse 14, when Arush, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. You see, when God gives you understanding, he also gives you wisdom. Then wisdom and tact will give you the ability to talk to people. To calm them down. He, he has a, a spirit of God. He has the, the spirit of understanding in him. He has, he said that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation. So when when the, the uh, chief commander wanted to kill them, he talked to him with wisdom and tact. So we can pray to ask God to give us wisdom and understanding that will help us to be efficient in the community, that will help us to be able to preach this gospel with understanding. Amen? So he asked the king time. You see, people, when they face trouble, they just start calling their friends. They start doing all kinds of stuff. They start, you know, panicking, being fearful. But Daniel is used wisdom. He, the thing you see there here, he, he tell the king that he needs some time. So he went and tell his friends, verse 17 said, Daniel returned home and explained this matter to his friends, Hananiah and Michelle and Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. You see, when people have problems, they the last thing, they, the first thing they will do is to call their friends and try to get answers from other people. But they will not go to pray. But a child of God, who knows this God that reveals truth? You see, Deuteronomy 29, 29, they, they, God reveals secret. The secret is in God. And the revelation is for us. So the revelation, they know that they have to go to pray. The first response for them is to go to pray. So during that night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. And the Daniel praised God of heaven. Listen to this. He said, praise be to God. Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the designer. He, re he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in the darkness and light dwells in him. I thank and praise you, God 
of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power, and you have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. You see, we have to go to God in prayer. He will reveal deep and secret things to you. Where you don't know anything to do, pray. Prayer will help you. Another thing I wanted you to see that they have this courage. They have confidence from knowing who God is. And this confidence comes from God's word. They have focus on who God is, you see? So Daniel, in the next version, you see that the king of is now, his son is now reigning in the, in the kingdom. And they have made this Daniel one of the administrators. So now Daniel is exemplary of, uh, of a good character that we, we need to learn. Let's look at Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. His friends now, they conspired to, to find a fault to Daniel so that they, they can eliminate him. So the, those, those people don't know that Daniel is, have a very excellent spirit from God. So finally, see, verse 5 said, finally, these men said, we will never find any basis of charges against him. Man, Daniel, unless he has something to do with the law of God. You see, people will always try to indict you for being a believer. Ignore them because you have a benefit. You are more wiser. They will, they will try to intimidate you because you're a Christian. That's wrong. The God that we serve is a great God. But the only thing that they were trying to find against you is that you are a child of God, which is a great benefit. A great benefit. So let's see verse 10. So Daniel, see what they did. They went and talked to the king and made a law that no one should pray for 30 days. If you don't pray for 30 days, the enemy have already taken over your house. If you don't pray for a week, the enemy will just decide to ruin your life. So assuming that Daniel could not pray for 30 days. What will happen? They, they, they should have already killed them already. They have defeated them. But since what happened, Daniel said, verse 10 said, 6 verse 10 said, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been, had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the, the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down to his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God just as he had done before. You see, he continued to do what he used to do. He continued to pray three times a day. So this is what happened. When he opened the window to the Jerusalem, you remember when Solomon was dedicating the temple? Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 29. He prayed that if anybody that looks over towards Jerusalem and pray, they have a covenant God. God keeps his covenant with his people. So when, the, when, when Daniel was opening up towards Jerusalem, he is now in covenant with the God of Israel, the living God. So can we get First Kings chap chapter 7, chapter 8, verse 29, real quick? Okay, and no, chapter 8, I mean, Please. First Kings chapter 8. So he was dedicating the temple and he was telling them that anyone that prays and looking up to the temple and pray that God is going to hear his prayer and answer them and fulfill their request. Can we get that? Um, so Daniel continued to pray three times a day. He got to his knees because he prayed, giving his thanks to Jerusalem, giving thanks to God, um, just as he has been doing. Our God is a trustworthy God. Okay, verse 20, 29. That time, thy eyes may be open towards the houses right 
and a day, night and day, and even towards the place of which you have said, my name shall be there. The name of the Lord is there in Jerusalem. That thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make towards this place. This is a covenant keeping of That is why the reason Daniel was able to pray, he opened his window, he looked towards Jerusalem because they have a covenant keeping God. God hears his prayer. You see? Amen? So we have to continue to be dedicated as Solomon did. We have to continue to pray to, to continue to anytime that we have problem, we have to go to God in prayer. Prayer, he said, obey God and leave all consequences to him. Obey God and leave all consequences to him. So Daniel and his friends had this deep conviction that God is going to do what he says. Hebrews, Hebrews um, 13, 5 said that he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. He is always with you. Another thing I want you to see that is required for a godly influence is we have to have confidence, confidence in, in the God of Scripture. We must be convinced not only that the Bible is true, but that God himself is trustworthy. We must be convinced that God is trustworthy. We must be confident that he will keep his promise and we have to walk and through it. Amen? Another thing I want you to see is that to be a godly influence, we must have unshakable faith. We must have a strong faith in Jesus Christ. Unshakable faith. Nothing can shake you. Even if they say, okay, let's look at uh, um, Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. Now, Nebuchadnezzar made a golden image and wants everybody to bow down to this image. You remember that God wants, um, God have told him that now no one shall make any image, okay? If it, if it is so, verse 17, if so, like, so be our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from this burning furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. So the first thing is that they have been, the king has made this image and wants everybody to bow down. Once they start blowing the fruit and everything, they will bow down. But they told the king, we cannot bow down to this image because God has told them, you shall not bow, you shall not have any other God before me. In the Exodus chapter 20, he gave them all them. Thou shalt not make any image, whether it's the one in the heaven or in the air or in the sea or in the ground. Thou shalt not bow down to any image. So they have that conviction of the scripture in their mind. So when, when Daniel, um, when Chedrach, Misha, and Abednego were forced to go and they refused. They told the king, O oh, king, let it be known to you. We are not going to bow down to this image. Even if, you see where I love that place. But even if our God is not able to save us. Daniel chapter 3 verse 18. We have to, I have to read there. I love that place. But even if, he does not. We, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve you, your gods, or worship the image you have set up. The king got angry. He said, go and make that fire, firing furnace ten times, seven times hotter, as if that they, the one that is already hot cannot kill them. <laughs> but they, were, they have unshakable faith. They were not afraid of the king or even the fire and furnace. But one thing happened. When they threw them into the fire, they saw the third, the fourth image 
like the image of the Son of God. Sometimes God will allow you to go through the fire, but he will be there with you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. The fourth person was like the image of the Son of God. That is so sweet. You see, God always sometimes tests your conviction whether you will do the right thing or not. You will have to have confidence of who God is to be able to do what he says. It's left for you whether to compromise to do what they love, or you follow your God. But all you have to know is that God is God. He's able to deliver you from even the hands of the, the enemy and fire. Let's look at Psalm 128, uh, Psalm 103, verse 19. He said, He is our sovereign God over everything, heaven and earth. He will give you the calm spirit to go through trials and tribulation. The spirit of God is said in Romans 8.28 that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. And God wants you to know that you have a Christ-like spirit, the spirit of Christ. He said, let that mind be in you, that mind of Christ. You see, we are children of God and we have to obey him. Another thing that will help you to, to um, have a godly influence in your community, in your area of life, in the people around you, is um, that Christ has given, has given us uh, his spirit. So we have to have forgiveness. We have to forgive others what they did. For example, Daniel, all the things that they have done to him, he, he wasn't in any bitterness or anger. He was still lovable, doing what they're trying to do. So it should be for us like that. Can we get Colossians 5, 4, chapter 4, verse 5 and 6? I'm out. I'm almost out of time. He said, be wise in the way that you act toward, out, toward outsiders and make it most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be seasoned, be full of grace, seasoned with salt. Amen. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. Or, amen, how to answer everyone, which is very interesting. As a child of God, you have to talk to people with respect, even though they don't believe. Ask God to help you, to give you that tongue of the nanad. Amen. And finally, before I close, I want us to ask God to give us that spirit. If you have, don't have that spirit of God that will help you to shine in every area of your life, I want you to begin to ask God to give us that spirit. You see, Daniel is consistent, consistent with his work with God. When you walk with God, you have to fear the Lord. I say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We have to walk in integrity. We have to stay focused on who God, what God wants us to do in your life. He gave his son, Jesus Christ. When we are still sinners, he died for your sins. So the death of Jesus Christ speaks for your own salvation. If you give your life to Christ today, he's going to save you. You see, God is able to deliver you from everything. He sent his word and he healed us, delivered us from destruction. 
How many of you would like to receive Jesus Christ today? Raise your hand if you can. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So let us stand up and pray. Today, we're going to be asking God that he is a great God. That you want to be his child. That you want his spirit to be in you. He said, God is light and there is no darkness in him. He's faithful. He said, if you confess your sin and, and believe that he's faithful to forgive you your sin and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So lift up your voices and just ask God to forgive. Acknowledge your sin to him and he's able to deliver you. He's able to be with you as he's been with Daniel. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions and God sent his angel to deliver him. So the same way he can deliver you from your everything. Whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I call upon your name this night. I ask that whoever believes you, he said that you will not leave. That, oh Lord, as many that have received him, he has given the power to become the children of God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We ask that you pour your spirit upon us today, oh Lord. Forgive us our sins and forgive us everyone that have requested to know you today. May your spirit be filled upon them, oh Lord. Forgive them their sins. He said, if you believe, if you speak in your mind that Jesus Christ is all and believe in your heart that he will save you. Thank you, Lord, for saving us and delivering us from every evil. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to God. You may be seated. <laughs> ah. 